Hi, Al Williams with Hackaday here. I wanted to show you about how I had set up one of these cheap STM32 blue pill boards to do debugging with uh, the Arduino libraries and using the IDE to do the builds, although not the debugging. Now, these are really inexpensive boards. Blue pill is a uh, nickname, but they're basically a little blue board. They're clones of the Maple Mini and it's got a little 32-bit processor on it, and they're very, very inexpensive. So my plan was to go get a copy of the latest Arduino IDE. Uh, you need a fairly recent version, the one that's in Ubuntu, uh, or in this case, Kubuntu, which is essentially the same thing, is too old. It doesn't have all the capabilities that you need to be able to support this board. And out of the box, it doesn't have that capability either. You have to go in and point to a GitHub page. So I'll cover all this in the post, but just to give you a quick rundown, if you look in the preference menu, I did check the show verbose output during compilation. You'll see why that is in a second. And I also put this URL in for the additional boards manager URL. Now if you have a couple of those, you can go in here and there's a nice interface to edit them. It just puts commas in between them. In this particular case, I just had one anyway, so that's okay. And when you do that, you wind up with, on the board menu, you can go up to board manager and it will add things from that URL. So if I go look up STM, you'll see that right here is an STM32F core. And it actually mentions the blue pill by name, even though, like I say, that's not really the official name of it. So obviously I've already installed this one, but there'd be a button to install it and you could install from here. And once you did that, you'd be able to go into your tools, pick up the board menu, and you'll be able to pick the, the one that you want, which is a little bit off my screen in this case because I'm on a smaller screen to record this. But you can see it's the blue pill. And then the upload method I have is the ST-Link. I've got the ST-Link board, which is really the board that's uh, half of a, or maybe a quarter, of an STM32VL Discover kit. And so that's the ST-Link programmer that's made to go with that kit, but it's actually just a general purpose USB debugger for STM chips. Uh, you can pull two jumpers and then run some wires over to the target and use it with any of the STM chips. So that's what I've done here. So I took the basic blink sketch and I made a few little changes to it, mostly to make it more interesting to debug. I put some variables in it and some expressions, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and compile that, you know, do the verify button. And when you go look at the output from that, you'll see a couple of things. You can see where the tools are stored that it's using to actually compile them. And if you scroll over enough, you'll see that the source files are actually coming from a temp directory not the directory that you think your source code stored in because the Arduino IDE grabs a bunch of your code and a bunch of its code and gloms it all together, puts it in one giant file and compiles that. So we need to know where that file is and that file's on temp, Arduino build, and then there's some number and that, ran that number's kind of randomish. Uh, in my case, it's 130368. So I've already come over here in this window and I'm going to try to run GDB, but there's more to running GDB than just running it here because obviously I don't want to debug something on this computer. I need to load that software into that blue pill board and debug it over there. There's an STUtil program that I'll talk about how to build in the post, and that's going to handle that interface for me. I'm going to tell it to listen on TCP port 1234 just because that's a convenient port. There's nothing magic about that. Uh, and it's not a privileged port, so anything under 1,024 I'd have had to been root for. So you can see it says it's a GDB server and it's listening. So the next thing I want to do is I need to find where those tools were stored. And if you notice, they were in my home directory under the Arduino 15 directory, under Packages, under STM32, Tools, ARM, NUN, EABI, GCC, and there'll be some wacky version number. 
and then bin. And you'll see there, there's a whole bunch of those tools. That's the tools that it used to compile, and you can read that off that screen at the bottom of the IDE. So there's the GCC, and it's really important that we use the same GDB that we use the GCC. Uh, when I tried this earlier, I was just using a copy of GDB that I had, even though it was for ARM, and I was getting pretty good results, but it was a little squirrely. It would occasionally lose track of where it was, and the answer was to use the exact version of GDB. Luckily, all the setup for this, in other words, they included GDB. You don't have to go figure out how to build a matching one. It was already there. They even have the debug output turned on in the build scripts that the IDE uses. So it was very convenient, and clearly they mean for you to do this, but uh, it's sometimes a little hard to get started without somebody to walk you through it. So I'm going to run GDB, and I'm going to tell it I want the text user interface. That's a little nicer than just the bare command line. You'll see in a minute what that looks like. And I need to get the executable. Well, the executable is in this directory, this temp directory, and it's called blinkdebugino.elf. Now, if you ever need to look at the source code in here, by the way, it's in the sketch subdirectory. And in this case, you'll see we're going to get that pulled up automatically, so we're not going to really care about that. We just need this executable. So I'll bring that up, and that looks pretty promising. There's some source code up there. The problem is, is we're not connected to the board, so this is all pretty theoretical. Um, you can see the Arduino main there where it says set up and loop. You know, it's making those calls into your code. This is all code out of the library. But I need to set the target. And I'm going to say target extended remote. And because that server in the other window is on my same machine, I could say localhost. And I could also say some other machine name if I had the firewalls open and things like that. But because it's localhost, I'm just going to put the port number with a colon. So 1234 with a colon in front of it. I could have said localhost 1234 also with a colon separating them. And you can see it did in fact connect over here. And now that looks like a step backwards because there's no source available. That's because it's sitting there in the reset controller and there's no source for that. It's just literally sitting at an interrupt vector inside the ARM processor. So there's nothing to see there with this particular view. First thing I need to do is program the flash on that board. So I'll do a load, and you'll see it's going crazy over there in the other window, and it did in fact transfer my program over. Normally you might think of a normal GDB session is now you have to start the program, but because it's jammed up over there at the reset, it's actually already started. So when we get ready to run, we're really going to continue. It already thinks it's running. But let's look at our code a little bit. Most of our code was in the loop subroutine, so I did a list on that. And let's put a break at loop. Now, the compiler optimizes stuff, so sometimes the stepping through a line at a time isn't as satisfying as you'd like. Uh, unless you want to turn off optimization quite a bit. But it's still pretty useful and lets you see the order of the calls, lets you inspect variables and things like that. So we've got that breakpoint. I'm going to do a continue. And there we go. We've got a breakpoint inside loop. I'll do a single step. And you can see it kind of jumps around a little bit. Again, that's kind of that optimization that I'm talking about. And if I want to print counter, okay, that hasn't been set up yet for the plus. Like I say, it does jump around a little bit while it's doing optimis. You know, the code's optimized, so it's not coming in the right order. Um, so let's print counter again. There you go. It's got a 1 in it. Uh, let's print DLY. It's got a 1,000 in it. It'll have a 1,000 or a 1,001. I just kind of put that in there to make it more interesting to debug. Um, you know, I can look at my stack trace and see where I've come from. That's not very interesting here because it's kind of in the top-level subroutine, but... Uh, or almost. It's just only got main in front of us, but if you were a couple of levels deep, that would be really useful. And I can always do a continue again, and it'll keep going till it hits that breakpoint again. And I think there's six hardware breakpoints on that CPU. So GDP has a lot of commands. I'm not going to go over all of them, but you can see just being able to step through your code, print variables, look at your stack. Uh, those are all really, really useful, and that's really happening on the hardware. That's not a simulation. Uh, it's going out through that ST-Link dongle, which is more or less a JTAG adapter, 
So it's really looking at the real things on the chip. You can, in fact, get information about uh, the registers and memory, things like that, if you want. And so that's pretty much it. You can just quit out of GDB when you're done. Uh, you might want to kill that server when you're done. And there you go, Arduino code with uh, debugging.